Hey, what's up guys? This is Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To and wanted to come to you with a follow-up video to the video that I just posted um, last night actually uh, talking about this new extremely bad vCenter server uh, security vulnerability. Uh, and basically all it requires is an attacker have network access to port 443. Now, uh, with that being said, it's best practice to segment your network. Don't have vCenter sitting on the same network as uh, certainly as your clients, uh, client operating systems, uh, end user network that they are surfing the internet, they're doing all those other things. Uh, that is just bad uh, security hygiene to have all of those resources uh, in the same production network. You wanna segment that out. However, what happens if you have a production vCenter that you just absolutely cannot get the buy-in to uh, segment the network? And, you know, I get it. Uh, segmenting a network is not something that you want to uh, take lightly. Uh, it's something that uh, can potentially, if not done correctly, it could lead to uh, downtime, disruptions, all those types of things. With that being said, um, how can you achieve the same result in, uh, in a sense to secure your vSphere environment, in particular securing vCenter server? Well, one of the features that I mentioned in the past video was vCenter firewall. Now, what is that? Well, vCenter has a very basic uh, firewall that allows you to do network level, so we're talking layer three, uh, filtering on traffic coming into vCenter. So not a lot of features, not a, don't think of a robust uh, firewall that you're used to uh, protecting your enterprise, a Palo Alto, a checkpoint, those type of things, that's not what we're talking about. But think Windows firewall, think uh, other basic firewalls that you know we can use for certain use cases. Now, the reason I mention this is the next best thing to protect your vCenter server if you cannot properly segment your network that is an easy win to bolster security when it comes to uh, vCenter server is to make use of this firewall. So how does this work? Well, as you can see, I'm logged into the VAMI interface. I've got a lab environment here, uh, a VCSA vSphere 7.0 update 2. Uh, as you can see, I already have the latest patch level that does remediate this emergency bug. So we're, we are already at that point, a patch level uh, on this vSphere uh, vCenter environment. However, let's take a look at this firewall functionality. So I'm gonna click firewall, and as you can see, everything's blank at this point, uh, but we have the ability to uh, add. So what this is, is a very basic top-down uh, firewall rule set that you can implement in your vCenter server that allows you to filter traffic. So what you can literally do as you notice, we can create a new firewall rule. Not a lot of options here, so this is pretty basic. This is, think, just network level uh, is all we can do. As you can see, we can't even uh, say I want to uh, restrict traffic to 443 or some other port. We don't see any of that. So, you know, uh, not the best uh, functionality as far as the firewall is concerned, but if you cannot segment that network, let's say we are sitting on a client network with the vCenter server of 192.168.1.0 and my vCenter server is sitting on this network. So uh, this firewall uh, allows us to essentially uh, create filtering that allows us to say, even though I'm sitting on 1.0 slash 24, 
I can reject all traffic from that particular network to this vCenter appliance. Now, there's some thought you still need to put into this as uh, what this will do, let's say you know we have a vCenter server sitting here on 1.0, well, what, if, what about our ESXi hosts? So you have to think about other required hosts or endpoints or other management tools that you want to speak to vCenter and we will need to take care of that traffic as well. What I suggest, uh, and, and with the basic nature of this firewall, as soon as I hit save, this is live. There is no, uh, like with certain firewalls, there is no commit, there is no, hey, let's write this to uh, our running config, this is live. So I am now rejecting traffic, all traffic from the subnet. So what I suggest doing, since this is a top-down level, now let me just back up one second. You can do this and you can add specific hosts. So let's say I have a ESXi host on uh, the in the IP address dot 100 I can add that uh, host here now as you notice this is functioning as a top-down reading from the top rules down so anything higher in the list takes precedent so I am still blocking traffic what we have to do is use the reorder uh, take this number two entry and we can say move up now that host effectively can now still talk to this vCenter even though its parent subnet is rejected because this is a more specific rule it's higher in the rule list the reason I, I say I would start with uh, the allows even though we know we don't have any rejects yet start with the allows because the, that way, when you do add the reject or deny traffic, you've already got the allows in there. So you're not going to see any disruption. You're not going to have to panic and say, oh, I've got to reorder. Let me hurry up and do that while you've got hosts that are now disconnected from vCenter. So we don't want that. So better process with the basic functionality here to first allow uh, or add the allow uh, clients. Uh, or allowed IPs, I should say. Now, I'm going to show you what happens with uh, this uh, rule. I'm going to uh, change this back to our parent subnet. So 1.0 slash 24. I'm going to put it at a reject. I'm going to show you. Uh, I've got a uh, just Windows 11 uh, VM I was playing around with. As you can see here, the IP address for this uh, Windows 11 box is .237. I can now try to uh, get to this uh, VCSA appliance. So it's sitting on, in my network, I actually have this separate from the 1.0, 192.168.1.0 1 .1 network. I don't have it on that network, but I want to demonstrate the functionality of this firewall. So as you can see, I'm hitting the IP address for uh, our VCSA appliance. I don't have DNS configured to where it can resolve the, the VCSA appliance. Not looking good, which is good in our case because I have blocked this network that this VM is sitting on. And what do you know? We get a timeout. Now let's go back. Let's say, uh, let's add the IP address for uh, our Windows 11 host. Let's say, actually, I want to put this at a slash 32. We're going to say accept traffic and as you can see I still have let's test out the top-down theory as to how these rules are processed 
still looking like traffic is blocked, which is expected due to the way the, the rules are listed. And we're going to let this time out, uh, which it just did. Now let's play around with this. Let's say I want to allow this particular workstation, but I have other dangerous workstations on the, when I say dangerous, I've got end users using, uh, you know, just basic end users, browsing the internet, risk for ransomware, all that uh, fun cybersecurity stuff. But let's say this is a management workstation that an IT admin uses. Well, let's add that. So we've added it, we've moved the order up, but we're still blocking the parent subnet. So let's save that. Now let's, and as you can see, it's already uh, trying to, and what do you know? Uh, it refreshed, and now we have connectivity to the VCSA appliance. So what do we learn here? This is a great way uh, to quickly, easily remediate network connectivity to a vCenter server in very flat networks that were not designed correctly for security in mind. So without having to create new VLANs, without having to uh, get firewall rules uh, set up uh, on the uh, data center firewall, perhaps that is taking care of all the inner VLAN routing, all of that complexity goes away by simply using the vCenter server firewall. And it's very effective if an attacker who knows about this vCenter um, bug is able to infiltrate a workstation on, on the 1.0 network and he is not on 237, he still cannot, even though, uh, even if this vCenter were vulnerable, I am patched in this case, but if it were vulnerable, that attacker could not still get to this vCenter to uh, carry out an attack that utilizes this uh, vulnerability. So a great feature I think that is quite underutilized, uh, many people do not even know that vCenter has a firewall capability built in. And ESXi as well has a similar local host firewall that can be uh, utilized. Well, hopefully this sheds some light on uh, this feature that uh, is great in the sense that it allows to easily uh, stand this cybersecurity protection up for your vSphere environment pointed to your vCenter server and filters restricts traffic to that all-important vCenter server. Well, again, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope that hope the context uh, of what we're trying to talk about securing vCenter. Hope this little tidbit helps, especially in SMBs or other environments that aren't quite designed correctly from a network perspective. Well, hit like on the video, uh, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for future videos uh, from uh, Virtualization How To. See you guys later.